Today, we are going to appreciate the beauty of the elegant, diverse, and utterly magnificent seahorse. Yeah, that's right, seahorse, not land horse like this guy here. More like this guy, but not really. What we were talking about looks a little bit like this. So let's start from the beginning. The seahorse has a long history ending with the fish we all know and love today. The seahorse's phylogenetic history starts with the Gasterus deformis. Six more species are involved until we finally reach the modern seahorse in the Solenostum Dei family and of the hippocampus genus with more than 30 separate species. The millions of years of evolution that the seahorse underwent definitely paid off too. The seahorse developed an array of adaptations to survive in the coral regions of the oceans, including camouflage, a long snout for sucking in food, and a long tail for both moving in water and attaching itself onto coral and aquatic plants. And these little guys definitely need these traits too because they are both prey and predator. Seahorses are omnivores and tend to prey on plankton, small microorganisms, and crustaceans, placing them as primary consumers in their trophic pyramid. In fact, seahorses are ambush predators. They wait for the prey to come to their mouth and suck the water in through their snout like a vacuum, capturing the prey. However, they aren't the kings of the sea. Seahorses are readily hunted by anglerfish, flatheads, and sea urchins, as well as opportunistic predators like fish, sea turtles, birds, and marine mammals, who will often take advantage of a large population of seahorses to fill their tummies. Possibly due to those pesky opportunistic predators, seahorses tend to have low population densities. These populations usually choose coral reefs or temperate seagrasses as homes, and they usually don't leave their home for their entire lives. And that's not all seahorses stay loyal to. Interestingly enough, seahorses mate monogamously for a life, a rare occurrence in nature. Indeed, they stick with the same seahorse for life and even perform a ritualistic dance, matching each other's movements when the couple comes into contact. But by far, the most studied aspect of seahorses is their reproduction. Unlike most organisms, the female seahorse doesn't carry the eggs, instead, the male does. For a few weeks, the male seahorse carries up to 5 to 2,000 young, and he swells up to nearly twice his normal size during the process. I know I'm jealous. Once those seahorses are hatched, you can expect them to live up to 5 years, growing up to 12 inches in length. However, the story of the seahorse isn't all that glamorous. Just like most of Earth's biodiversity, the seahorse is under risk of extinction. Causes such as overfishing, global climate change, and habitat loss are causing these little guys to plunge in numbers. In East Asia, seahorses are commonly used in traditional Asian medicine, and as the popularity of the medicines increase, the seahorse population decreases. With global climate change, we see a direct increase in the number and intensity of storms. These storms kill large numbers of seahorses who are weak swimmers and can't escape the catastrophe. The last factor of seahorse decline is habitat loss. Modern fishers use a method of fishing called trolling, which scrapes an enormous net across the seafloor to capture huge numbers of fish. However, anything scraped over by the trolling is destroyed, leading to coral reef destruction around the globe. This not only affects seahorses, but a surplus of other organisms and ecosystems as well. It is clear that we need to take preventative action to conserve these magnificent creatures. From all corners of the world, their grace, beauty, and utter eccentricity have gained the adoration of billions of humans, and it is now our turn to save them. With research, action, and legislation, we can keep this very welcome part of Earth's incredible biodiversity thriving.